This is so sick. This looks like Jim right here. He has a similar hat. <laughs> a little younger. Yeah. There's, there's nothing to worry about until he hits something solid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to take our time. I, I normally, I'm a little bit of a brisk driver, but uh, not when I have someone on the back, so. And this is so cool. I'm a big uh, sailor. I, I used to sail out all the time. Uh-huh. So, uh... I love marinas like this. So many boats. You see, none of them are. So this is all storage. Right. Recording. There's two potential hiking spots, and and you can pick it. Um, one is Cozy Dell, which is sits at um, the bottom of the orange field, and you start the climb there, and you go to the top. It takes about 45 minutes, and and, um, and then once you're at the top, it overlooks like two different valleys. Oh. And then the other one is further up the road. Um, you gotta you gotta go down a, a really steep embankment and then you get to a dam and it's kinda remote. I only I, I've heard about it and James showed me videos of it. I just found it last week for the very first time. I've never been in a helicopter. Well, there's a lots of them on the news here because people are constantly running from the police here, so the copter helicopters are constantly chasing people. And maybe oh, really? if we drive fast enough, we can get them to chase us. Oh, that's so crazy, really? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is so pretty. It doesn't look like this when you're in a car. Right. Recording. What do you like about the place? I, I like the energy. I like that it, you can go that way and you're in the desert. You can go, like, 30 minutes this way. You're in a completely different feel of a town. Like... You go a little bit that way, you're in like major hub, like LA, San Diego. Just neat. And we drive we drove past like all the houses with their boats parked out there and I just like I'm like, oh this is sick. Yeah, there's a lot of houseboats back there in the marina. Um, a lot of people live on their boat. We used to jump off of the houseboats like up in northern Michigan, like we would sneak on top of them and jump into the water. Uh huh. <laughs> so so sick. I mean, I got a cool experience out of it. I got to meet amazing people. His dad still talks about me. Oh, good. But he's like he's like uh, in uh, school in Slovakia now, and he's like learning how to like he has his doctorate, and now he's like going to become a surgeon or something. And I was like, damn. Wow. You're yeah. like, damn. I should have stuck with him. Yeah, I was like, shit. <laughs> we could be living on that farm right now. What the heck? <laughs> Yeah, you know the cool thing is that you were in Iceland in May. I've been there in there. I've been in there. I've been there in May as well. And um, so the sun doesn't really go down. You know. No, just, it doesn't. They have blackout curtains. Yeah. It, like never gets dark at night. Yeah. So it was like. That's when I stole my first pint glass from a bar. So I have a box, a couple boxes of pint glasses I've stolen from all over the world at my parents' house. Mm -hmm. Like my favorite bars in my hometown to like. <laughs> like bars in Iceland, I just take pint glasses and walk out of with them. So my house, I have some days is going to be a collection of pint glasses from all over the world. Cool. It's be funny. Do you remember what the pint glass in Iceland says? It's the country of Iceland. Oh, cool. That says Sule on it. Okay. Nice. Which I think is just like a beer company there, or whatever. Right. And yeah. But I saw it and I was like, "What's better than a, what? A, what a better souvenir than this Iceland pint glass from a bar?" Yeah. And then it sparked this bad habit in me, and so now I have them from everywhere. Every college bar in my in where I went to college, I have one from everywhere. Now my next question is, how do you? I mean, you're you're a pretty small person. How do you get away with stealing a pint glass? So either you stick it in your purse or you just walk right out with it and don't say anything. Or like <laughs> if I was at like a restaurant, sometimes I would put it in a to-go box. Oh yeah. Smart. And just walk right out with it. Like you just get creative. That's smart. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, what's that cost them? Like two bucks? No, they, they get the glasses for free. So how it works is that um, it's the same as Norway, I'm sure, and Denmark, Sweden. The pint glasses is supplied by... Uh, the beer that they carry on tap. So, like, for example, in Norway, they have a Norwegian beer called Hansa. Mm -hmm. So, um, they Hansa would sh send us uh, cases of, of pint glasses with their name on it. And then if you have Carl, if you serve Carlsberg beer, then you get 
pint glasses at St. Carlsberg yeah, from so Denmark. Yeah, I didn't do anything wrong. <laughs> no. So, yeah. The, and so, th this is a shortcut into town. Um, takes about 10 minutes, and um, it's a really, it's a beautiful drive when the weather's nice. And on the weekends, there's just tons of motorcycles um, on this road. And you would really like the Upper Peninsula. You have to sometime go up there. There's a road that looks just like this going to Copper Harbor, which is the most northern part in the um, in Michigan. Uh -huh. Especially in the fall, the trees just cover over the top of it. Beautiful colors, and it's insanely amazing. Okay. And you just get to meet more Sick, interesting people. Uh, I was traveling uh, on a really remote trail called the Trans American Trail. Have you ever heard of it? I have heard of it. Okay, so it's a dirt trail that goes from the East Coast of the United States to the West Coast, and I do it every year. And I'm in like the middle of friggin' nowhere in a town that has 45 people, a population, and they have just one diner. And this is in the middle of Utah, and I mean, like, in the middle of nowhere, and I'm sitting there, I'm eating, and I'm not really so much as eating as I'm I'm squatted down over the edge of the table, and I'm just shoveling the food into my mouth, because, I, because, I, because I've just driven, like, eight hours without eating, and, you know, I was up in the mountains for all day, all day long, and when I finished eating, I, and after I scared everyone around in the diner, uh, around me they took off this one family behind me <laughs> they, go, they go excuse me sir and I'm like who me and they're like yeah are you from Dayton <laughs> and I was like uh I'm, I look around because I'm really confused like why would they ask me if I'm from Dayton um but I drove Uber so maybe one of these people was my what was a passenger of mine I'm like yeah I'm from Dayton uh, yeah, so are we. Oh, really? We're where in Dayton are you from? We're like we live right off of Brown Street, right off, right behind the Pine Club uh, on UD campus. I'm like, oh my God, I know that's less than two miles from my house. I know exactly where it's at. Uh, how did you? Why did you ask me why I'm from Dayton? And they're like, oh, because you're wearing this T-shirt that says Flying Pizza. And I'm like, oh, oh, I, it's a unique place to date. Yeah, and it was the very first time I've ever I've ever worn that T-shirt ever. I had just bought it like maybe a month earlier, and I don't know. I just never got around to wearing it till right till that day. And and uh, oh, wow, that's so funny. And it turns out their their cousins went to school with my daughter. My daughter was at Fairmont High School at the time, and so my daughter was in Russia. I started texting her. She just happened to be awake, and uh, she she's like, yeah, I know so and so, and and then they're te they're texting their cousins at the same time. They're like, oh yeah, they know Dasha. And, uh, such a small world. Okay, so two days later, I'm almost completely through the state of Utah. Remember, I'm, I'm going on a dirt trail over mountain passes. Uh -huh. And I'm in another really small town, really, like maybe 150 people. And I'm standing in line at a coffee shop, really cool coffee shop, by the way. And the guys behind me say, they ask, they say, excuse me, are you from Dayton? And I'm, <laughs> I, I look, I turn around really fast, like I'm shocked. And I look down at my T-shirt. And I'm not wearing any T-shirt that says Ohio on it, so I'm, now I'm really confused. I'm like, uh, yeah, I am. How? What would make you, make you ask that question? Recording. I'm sorry. What did you say? The orange trees are super cool. You never seen an orange tree? No. That's so funny. I've seen mango trees. Have you been down to Florida? Like when I was a kid. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't spent much time there. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, my wife and I, we um, we lived in the DR for, me and her and Dasha for 10 years, so uh, you're surrounded by fruit trees. They're everywhere. Yeah. You can't, they're everywhere, and people are selling them along the road everywhere as well. So we ate a lot of fresh fruit. So that, see that road there that's blocked off? That mm -hmm. goes to a dam. Oh, but, that's the other hike. No, but the, that, the other, yeah. The other hike goes to that same dam, but not that way. It goes over this over this mountain here, oh, and neat. that's what I did last week. It was fantastic. So 
So the road is closed at the end of your? The road's closed right up here. And um, people swim. Like when I was here a couple of days ago, it was 75 degrees. There were so many kids swimming, swimming in, this, in that creek. In this creek and further down as well. And, and like this stuff looks like Iceland, like out in the mountains. Right. Except they have fresh water just streaming all down the mountain that you could just drink. Right. So, so last week I went down this trail, and this trail will eventually lead you down to this dirt road. That dirt road leads you to that dam there. That dam goes like a hundred feet down. The scissor. Yeah. That's crazy. A dollar per bag. It's only one dollar for a whole bag of fruit. Uh, look, it's tangerines, oranges, and, fruit. and limes. Oh, shit. What are pixies? I don't know. They just look like oranges. Okay, I can hear you. Okay. It's a little dirty. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. Look at this huge one on the ground here. Oh, it's so good. <clears throat> oh my god, it's covered. It's huge, but it's covered with dirt. Dirt's good for you. <laughs> I'll save it for later. You want to grab one more? Sure. Well, we got grapefruit, we got oranges, tangerines, and now we got strawberries. <laughs> run, run, run! <laughs> Start the car! Hurry up! Get going! <laughs> Okay. Recording. If there wasn't like a, a road right here, it'd be fun to take it down on like a longboard or something. Oh, look at that hill. Like, oh, look That's at these crazy. kids. Oh, yeah. They didn't even look. They, she just went straight through. She never looked. <laughs> oh, I bet this is crazy in the summertime when the weather's nice. Oh, someone's getting a parking ticket. This is what they do in Norway. They take a picture of the fence. Oh, shit. Look at this crazy hill. Woo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was so scary. <laughs> Recording. Oh, goodness. <laughs>